Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 10, Leçon M. And in this lesson we'll work together on what we call le discours indirect. So first we'll see a few examples just to make it clear and to well discover what this discours indirect is. After that we'll see how to make it, so la formation and the Last part will be, well, we'll discover together the verbs that you could uh, use to introduce this uh, discours indirect. Okay, but then let's start with the, les exemples, a few examples, okay? And, well, it's quite interesting because I wanted to put uh, simple, well, sentences here. Elle pense, pensez to think, le vendeur est compétent, okay? Le vendeur, the seller, est, is compétent, competent. So, it's all, of course, it's possible to, to, to use a sentence like that, you know, elle pense, and then you put deux points, and ouvre les guillemets, le vendeur est compétent. What if I would like to transform this sentence and use this, elle pense que, okay? So, same thing in English, it could be she thinks or she thinks that. And that's the whole concept of this discours indirect. And the sentence could be transformed like that. Elle pense que, so she thinks that, and have a look, le vendeur est compétent. So it's quite easy in that case, and of course I took on purpose a simple sentence to start, but then it's just to show you that, well, the sentence doesn't change that much. Of course you will have to take this guillemets away and then deux points, so everything should go away, but then in that case the sentence doesn't change that much. Elle pense que le vendeur est compétent. All right? But then, of course, if you have a look at a sentence like that, il dit, dire is to say, so he says, je veux prendre un café. So, je veux, I want, it's vouloir, to want. Je veux prendre, prendre is to take, un café, a coffee. I want to take a coffee. So if you want to transform this sentence, it will be a bit different. Because in the first sentence, it's quite, it was quite simple. Because you, you had this il and elle. But in that case, well, of course, you've got the je veux. And you need to transform this Thing. So you need to adapt it because here we've got the subject. So subject is masculine and then it's at the third person. So il dit. So you will put this que as we had previously. And you will need to change je. You will need to change it into il. Okay, because that's the subject. Il. The verb should be at the third person, so have a look here, first person it's with X at the end, third person is with T at the end. Prendre un café, well it doesn't change. So normally it's the subject and the verb that will be affected if they are, okay? So in that case, il dit qu'il veut prendre un café. And of course, as usual in French, this que, if there is a vowel after, so remember this E uh, will have to go away. So you will get this qu'il. Il dit qu'il veut prendre un café. Okay, so this is this discours indirect. So the indirect form of il dit je veux prendre un café. It will be transformed like il dit qu'il veut prendre un café. Okay, so a third example. Elle promet je viendrai ce soir. Okay, promettre is to promise. And then Je viendrai, so I will come ce soir, okay? And here, elle promet, okay, que, so we should first have this que. Of course, I, as we had in the previous example, you must modify this je, okay? So we've got here the subject and it's feminine, so it should be the third person of the feminine, qu'elle. Okay, here we've got the future form, je viendrai, so you should put the verb at the future form as well, but then for elle, it will be elle viendra, and then ce soir doesn't change. Okay, elle promet, 
qu'elle viendra ce soir. So, if we want to discover or not really discover because we saw that, la formation, so keep in mind that you will put first, well, the first sentence or the first part of the sentence, then que, okay, could be translated with that in English, and the rest of the sentence or the second sentence, okay, that you should, in some cases, modify. Okay, we're talking about the subject and the verb. Keep in mind that que, if it is combined, as we saw, with a vowel, will become que, like that, okay, so a uh, needs to go away. So, the example, the classical example that we had was que and il, and it's becoming qu'il. It could be que and elle, and it will become quel. Okay, or if we're talking about uh, first names, you know, first names that will start with a, a vowel, it will be exactly exactly the same thing. Okay, and so now let's see the verbs that you could have, or uh, that you could use to introduce this uh, discours indirect. Okay, and the list will start now. Affirmer, ajouter, annoncer, déclarer, dire. Okay, so affirmer, ajouter, annoncer, déclarer, dire, expliquer, promettre, répondre, admettre, assurer. All right, so expliquer, promettre, répondre, admettre, assurer, avouer. Confirmer, constater, crier, démentir, so avouer, confirmer, constater, crier, démentir, s'écrier, s'exclamer, jurer, objecter, préciser, s'écrier, s'exclamer, jurer, Objecter, préciser, prétendre, proposer, reconnaître, remarquer, répliquer, prétendre, proposer, reconnaître, remarquer, répliquer. And the list could continue, but then still I wanted to introduce the well main verbs that will well require or that you could use to construct uh, a discours indirect keep in mind that you will have to put this que after these verbs okay so i hope it was clear if you want more videos then youtube.com slash imagier and the website is right here imagier.net have a great day bye bye bonjour à tous and welcome to learn french with vincent and this is unité 10 leçon N. And we'll see in this video, sorry, uh, le discours indir indirect, so it's the second part of this discours indirect, and in that case we'll see les expressions de temps. Just because uh, as we saw, normally in most of the cases, the thing or the things that will change when you want to construct this discours indirect are the subject and the verbs. But, of course, if you're using this expression de temps, well, they will change, of course, and we'll see how they will change. So, normally, if you say aujourd'hui, so at the direct form, aujourd'hui, today, if you want to transpose that at this discours indirect form, it will become ce jour-là, this day, ce jour-là, okay? So, aujourd'hui is not possible to be used in this discours indirect form, but then you should use instead ce jour-là, okay? Same thing, ce matin, this morning, you will use ce matin-là, okay? Ce soir, ce soir-là. And then, en ce moment, at this time, en ce moment, should be à ce moment-là, okay? So remember, aujourd'hui will become ce jour-là if you change a sentence, and if you put it at le discours indirect, ce matin will become ce matin-là, ce soir will become ce soir-là, and then en ce moment will become à ce moment-là.
Okay, let's see hier, yesterday, and so it will become la veille. Avant-hier, so the day before yesterday, l'avant-veille. Il y a cinq jours, so remember we've got this il y a structure to say this ago, so cinq jours, five days, five days ago in French it's il y a cinq jours. And then if you transpose this il y a cinq jours into this discours indirect, it will become cinq jours plus tôt, okay, plus tôt earlier. Okay, so hier will become la veille, avant-hier will become l'avant-veille, and then il y a cinq jours will become cinq jours plus tôt. Okay, and we can continue if you want with demain. Demain is tomorrow, and tomorrow will become le lendemain, the following day, le lendemain. Après demain, after tomorrow, and it will become le surlendemain. Okay, and dans cinq jours, in five days, will become cinq jours plus tard, plus tard, later. Okay, so keep in mind that demain will become le surlendemain if you change your structure into this discours indirect. Après demain will become le surlendemain. And then dans cinq jours, in five days, will become cinq jours plus tard, five days later. Okay, that was it. It was simple and short and I hope it was clear. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier and the website imagier.net is waiting for you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent. And this is Unité 10, Leçon O. And in this lesson, we'll see together le discours indirect, les modifications dans la phrase. So... We saw together uh, in the two previous videos uh, this uh, discours indirect, so the way to construct it, and then few modifications that can happen when you make this discours indirect. So if you didn't watch the, the previous videos, I definitely advise you to do so because it will be more clear. Uh, but then still, we what we can do is uh, we can do a uh, a really fast uh, overview and review of the discours indirect because, well, the discours indirect is basically if you've got, well, one sentence like that, elle pense, le vendeur est compétent. Okay, penser is to, to think, she thinks, le vendeur, the seller, est compétent, is competent. Okay, so in that case, it's possible to have uh, this kind of structure, okay, but then if you want to combine these two sentences into one, you can just modify it and uh, that's what we call the discours indirect in that case because you will get elle pense, so she thinks, que, that, and then you continue your sentence. Le vendeur est compétent. Okay, so in that sentence it's quite simple because well if you have a look at uh, the first structure we've got here and then the second structure we've got here, uh, it doesn't change that much. You only need to add this que, and then you will re remove a few things, but then no main uh, changes into your uh, second part or uh, this, uh, this part of the sentence. Okay, but uh, we'll see that in this video, of course, in some cases, when you switch or when you uh, modify and you you, you make this uh, discours indirect, well, you will have some uh, quite important modifications in your sentence, okay? But then, well, the rule goes like you will first have the first part of the sentence, then you will have your que, okay, that, and then the sentence will continue, okay? So that's the, 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 the whole concept of this discours indirect, so it evolves around this que thing and then remember that of course as usual in French if we've got vowels coming after then this uh will have to go away okay so let's see now one first example il dit okay dire is to say he says je pense que le film est bon je pense so penser I think that le film est bon. Okay, so if you want to modify this sentence, of course, you will have to change it a little bit. 
because it's not possible to say il dit que je okay so the subject it's not possible to continue with je in that case because you will have to uh, modify it and adapt it so in that case it should be il okay il pense que le film est bon all right so that's the only thing that you will have to modify so it's not really difficult but keep in mind that of course if the subject goes like that so je of course you will have to modify it and well put it according to the first subject here so il dit okay let's see now a second example il dit je te regarde okay so same thing so il dit uh, to say so he says je te regarde so if you remember we saw these pronouns before so i am looking or watching you okay but then in french we put this pronounce before the verb okay and it's interesting because in that sentence of course you can notice that we will have to modify this first je pronom personnel and then well probably we'll have to modify this t as well okay because i look or i watch or i look at you okay this you must be changed of course if we uh, switch it to the indirect uh, discourse okay so let's see now and it's quite interesting because in that case if you get the sentence just like that without any uh, previous informations wh whether this t is for a boy or a girl then it can be uh, quite tricky because we don't really know and we'll have two options the first one il dit qu'il okay so this il is the je that you modified or you modify according to il here okay so it must be the same and then it can be le if the person is uh, masculine so if he is looking at another person who is a man or a boy so in that case it should be le il le regarde okay and then the second option well it's almost the same but if you look carefully il dit qu'il la regarde okay and in that case it would be a woman or a girl okay according to 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 what was well previously uh, said so in that case we really need to know before whether we're talking about a boy or a girl a man or a woman okay uh, because if we don't then it can be can be tricky uh, to modify and put this uh, discourse indirect because we won't have any clue whether it's le or la okay another example il dit je présente ma proposition okay so here same thing uh, so yeah if i translate the sentence it's quite well simple so dire is to say we saw that previously je présente présenter to present ma proposition ma proposition my proposition or proposal if you want okay je présente ma proposition so in that sentence we know of course because we've been seeing that uh, in the previous examples that je will have to change and then in that case we assume that this ma so adjective possessive will have to change also and let's have a look so il dit qu'il okay so exactly the same thing that we saw previously présente and then you will have to adapt of course this adjective possessive so it won't be the first one so ma my okay but it will be well sa so third person of the singular okay remember that in french we will put this feminine form sa just because the word it is connected to so proposition is feminine all right okay so il dit qu'il présente sa proposition Il dit, je vous présente ma proposition. So it's almost the same sentence as we had previously, but then I wanted to introduce 
this vu, okay, so another pronoun, je vous présente ma proposition. Okay, so as we saw previously, je will change, so ma will change as well, and then probably this pronoun will change as well. So let's have a look. Il dit qu'il, okay, we saw that, présente sa proposition, we saw that as well, and then vous, okay, which is the, this pronoun, okay, pronom complément d'objet indirect, je présente à vous, okay, in that case you will have to modify and to put that at a third person of the plural. Il leur présente sa proposition. Ok? Il dit qu'il leur présente sa proposition. Il dit je vais parler à mes parents et je vais les inviter. Alright? So here it's quite interesting as well because, well, if you have a look, je, of course it will change. Vais parler à mes, this thing normally should change as well. Je will be the same, it will, be, it will change as well. And then it will be interested to, interesting to see whether this les will change. So what's your opinion? Mm -hmm. And let's have a look. So il will change. So je is becoming il. Mais is becoming c'est, je is becoming il, but then here it doesn't really change because you are just referring to mes parents and in that case it was already the plural form les invités, so it doesn't need to, to change at all. Okay, so il dit qu'il va parler à ses parents et qu'il va les inviter. All right. I know it can be or it can uh, look a bit difficult at the beginning, so don't worry because it's not uh, really easy and uh, that's just just a fact. Okay, but you, you will say that if you pr practice, then uh, it should be uh, quite okay. Um, but then, well, you know, it's step by step, so no stress, no pressure. We'll continue. So if you want more videos, of course, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash imagier and then uh, more material can be found there, www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bonjour à tous and welcome to Learn French with Vincent and this is Unité 10, Leçon P and it will be the last lesson regarding this discours indirect but it's a quite important one because we'll discover in this video les modifications de temps. Okay, so let's start now. Uh, so I wanted to first show you this uh, simple example because if we've got this sentence Elle te répond, je suis d'accord. Okay, so répondre is to answer. Te, it's for you. So she answers to you. Je suis d'accord. Okay, so in French this je suis d'accord is I do agree. Uh, of course, in that situation, if we want to transpose this first structure at this discours indirect, it's quite simple because you just need to put back all your elements so elle te répond, it doesn't change, okay? Que, that, remember, that's the key thing of this discours indirect, que, that, but then in that case, uh, needs to go away because we've got a vowel after, so quel, so je will have to be transposed to elle, of course, because the subject here is elle, Et d'accord. Of course, the verb is changing as well. Okay, but it's actually quite simple in that case because we've got, if you look carefully, in the first structure here, it's the present form, and here it's the present form. So, I mean, no big changes, and that's the that's the main thing. So, in that case, you don't really need to worry. You put back all your elements. You just modify them if necessary, and that's it. You've got your discours indirect structure. Okay, if you've got the same thing, you know, with here, 
the future. Elle te répondra, je suis d'accord. So, here, it's the future. It's répondre to answer, but at the future simple form. And in the uh, second part here, it's the present form. And let's have a look. And you'll see that it's not really difficult because it doesn't change that much. Elle te répondra, so we put back these elements here. Quel, okay, as we had previously, because it doesn't change here. It will be that, okay, que, but then you take the e away. Of course, you will have to modify this je and put it in here with elle est d'accord. The verb, if you look carefully, will stay at the present form. Doesn't need to change here. Even if we've got the future here, it will stay at the present form in the second part here. Okay? So, the thing is that for the present and the future, so if the verb that introduces this structure, this structure indirect, discourse indirect, is at the present form or the future form, then the good news is that you won't have to modify anything after it. Okay? So that's the rule. That's the rule. If the verb that introduces this structure is at the present form or the future form, then you don't modify the verb after which is a quite good news, but then of course, it's French language, and we've got to think that if we've got, so it will be the, the it, it's the common structure that we will have, so verb introducteur, and then after that we've got the, 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 the phrase, the sentence, okay? If you've got this first part here at the passé, Okay, so it's the past here. Passé means past. And when I write past, well, it, basically it could be imparfait, passé composé, uh, passé simple. All the past tenses that we saw so far, well, if this first verb is at the past, then the rest of the sentence so, or the rest of the structure here will have to be modified if you want to put that at the discours indirect. And that's what we'll see in this video. Okay? So the first example is if we've got this verb introducteur at the past form, okay, and for all the examples I will put this uh, first uh, part at the um, passé composé. Okay, so it will be easier that way. Okay, so if we get the second part here at the présent, well, this part will have to change, and, well, the verb introducteur will stay the same, but it will, I mean, this présent form will be at the imparfait. Okay, so let's have a look how it will go. So, as I said, first verb I did put that at the passé composé form and it will be always the same for all the examples. So I will keep the same sentence and I will keep the same verb and it will be at the passé composé. Elle t'a répondu, je suis d'accord. So we've got exactly the same sentence as we had previously when we had the present present or then future present. In that case, so as we saw, we've got passé composé and then present form. And if you remember what I just told you previously, then the rule goes like that. This first part doesn't change. It is still at the passé composé form. But the second part here, so your present form will be changed and you will have to put the verb, so it's the verb to be, uh, it's être, you will have to put it at the imparfait form. That's the rule. Okay, don't need to think why, how, etc. No, just put it at the imparfait. Okay, and you get the sentence. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle était d'accord. All right, so this is the way that you should uh, follow if you want to make this discourse indirect. And in the first part, you've got, well, the past. In the second part, you've got the present form. Okay, so let's see now. How do we do if we've got... Well, still the same thing, so the passé, and we've got in the second part 
le passé composé. Well, of course, the first part will stay the same as we saw, but then this passé composé form will become plus que parfait. And let's have a look. Elle t'a répondu. J'ai été d'accord. Okay. And so, j'ai été. This is the passé composé. J'ai été d'accord. So that's the thing that we'll have to change and we'll have to modify it and put it at the... Like here. Elle avait été. We'll put that at the plus que parfait. So we get, elle t'a répondu qu'elle avait été d'accord. All right, so remember, the first part doesn't change. Elle t'a répondu. Sorry, don't need to modify it. You don't need to, to change it. But then the second part, so, et été here, passé composé, will become avait été here. So it's the plus que parfait. Okay, so let's see now another possibility. If we've got, so we still the passé form in the first part, and then if we've got this futur simple form in the second part, then this futur simple will change and it will become futur du passé. So it's a strange thing <laughs> because we tend to call that, you know, futur du passé, but well, technically it's conditionnel présent. All right, so that's the way you will have to maybe remember it. Oops, the accent was in the wrong direction. It should be like that, okay? But it, it, anyway, it's the conditionnel présent form that you will have to put here. So let's have a look now. Elle t'a répondu, je serai d'accord, okay? So we do agree that, well, it's still the same here, but c'est composé. And in the second part here, je serai. So it's still the verb to be, but then remember, it's the futur form, okay, this future simple. Je serai d'accord. And so it will become, elle t'a répondu qu'elle serait d'accord, okay. They look quite similar, but keep in mind that this form here is the conditionnel present form, okay. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle serait d'accord. And so let's see now if we've got so still in the first part, the past, because that will be the, the whole thing of the, this video. And we've got this future anterior in the second part. And this future anterior will become what we call, and it's still the same thing, quite interesting, future anterior du passé, but then technically it's the conditionnel passé. Okay? Elle t'a répondu, j'aurais été d'accord. Okay, so here, what do we have? First, as usual, we've got this passé composé. J'aurais été, d'accord? Here we've got this future antérieur form. And it will become, elle t'a répondu qu'elle aurait été, d'accord? So still, the same thing, keep in mind that it looks a little bit like this form, but still, it is quite different because it's what we call conditionnel passé. Okay? So now, if we've got the futur proche in the second part, this futur proche will become aller, and it should be at the imparfait form plus l'infinitif. And so, elle t'a répondu, je vais être d'accord. So keep in mind that when we talk about this future proche, well, it's aller anyway, uh, but in that case, it's at the present form. Je vais, I am going to be, okay, je vais être, we want to make the liaison, je vais être, so I am going to be, uh, and in that case, well, as I said, you know, it's the present form. If you want to transpose that at the discours indirect, so as we saw, this first part doesn't change, but the second part here, so elle allait être d'accord. That's the only thing that will change. So you will have to put your verb aller here, and it will be at the imparfait. Elle allait être d'accord. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle allait être d'accord. And last but not least, if you've got in your second part, the passé récent, so this recent past, 
then it will be still the same structure, the same way to construct it. So normally, normally this passé récent is constructed like that, venir de, but then it's at the present. And in that case, it will be modified like we had previously for this near future, the future proche. It should be at the imparfait form. Okay, so let's have a look. Elle t'a répondu, je viens d'être d'accord. Okay, so this is what we call le passé récent. So it's the verb venir, and here it's the present form. Okay, and you will have to modify it and to put it at the imparfait form here. Elle t'a répondu qu'elle venait d'être d'accord. Okay, so the only thing that you will have to modify, it's this verb here, venir. So when you get this passé récent, it's at the present form. It will be here at the, at the imparfait form. Okay? Elle t'a répondu qu'elle venait d'être d'accord. So I know it may sound strange and difficult, but then keep in mind that, well, I did this thing. If you put it at the present and the future, so remember it doesn't change at all, okay? But then if you want to have this first verb at the past form, so that's when it will become tricky. So keep in mind that if you've got this structure, so first verb at the passé form and then the second verb, it is at the present form, okay? So when you will modify this structure, and you will put this discours indirect. So remember, présent, as we saw, will become imparfait. Okay? Then, if you've got passé composé, so in the s still in the second part of the structure, it will become plus que parfait. Okay? If you've got the futur simple, so as the second structure, it will become what we saw, futur du passé. If you've got futur antérieur, so in the second part of this structure, it will become futur antérieur du passé. If you've got futur proche, it will become, well, like le futur proche, but then the only thing that you've got to modify is aller. You should put this verb at the imparfait, and then the rest of the structure. If you've got the passé récent, then the only thing like we had for the future proche, the only thing you will have to modify is the verb venir, and you should put that at the imparfait form. Then don't forget the, prepo the preposition de and your infinitive after. Okay, so I know it is difficult, but then, well, it's quite important, and especially we, we tend to use it quite, quite easily in French. Okay, so... If you're not sure that it was clear, don't be afraid to watch the video one more time. If you want more videos, then youtube.com slash imagier is waiting for you. And then the website www.imagier.net. Have a great day. Bye bye.